Oh, I see. Young people in love are never hungry. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 107 of Movies Are Awesome, the show all about sand art. My name is Nathan Pottle and thank you so much for joining me today. And before we get into today's topic, I have a few things that I want to talk about. First and foremost is that at long, long last, movie theaters are opening back up in my city. I cannot wait. This week, they're going to be opening back up. So I am going to the theaters on Thursday. So by the time this episode drops out, I will have already gone to the, back to the theater and I'm so happy to do so. We're going to be watching A Quiet Place Part 2, so I will be able to review it for here on the show. So next week's episode, A Quiet Place Part 2 review, make sure to look out for that. That's huge news. I have been waiting and waiting for movie theaters to come back out. It is the thing that I have missed most amid this entire pandemic type thing. I just, that whole theater experience, I've talked about it on the show before, I absolutely love going to the theater and seeing a new movie. The atmosphere and the experience is just unparalleled to the at-home experience. You just, you can't beat it. You know, even if you have like a whole home theater set up at home and all of these different things, it's not the same as the, the outing, you know, actually leaving the house and going somewhere. I think that's an essential part of the element. So even though I've just upgraded my at-home system and it's amazing and I love my movie watching experience at home that I have right now it it just doesn't compare to going to the theater so I'm so excited for that that's why I wanted to mention it and then one more thing the reason I'm talking about today's topic this week is because we also get the start of the new Disney Plus series Loki so if you're a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you know Loki as a character he's from the Thor movies and then he was in a couple of the Avengers movies now he's getting his own series and he's an interesting character there's a whole lot of weird stuff that they could explore that I'm that I'm really excited and interested to see about so that's coming out for me it's tomorrow but by the time this episode drops it'll already be out at least the first episode I'm pretty sure we're only getting the first episode on Wednesday this week. I can't remember for sure. I know that critics got to watch the first two episodes in order to start to let reviews of the show out, but I'm pretty sure that we're just getting the first episode. So Loki's coming out, so I want to talk about some superhero stuff. So I was thinking about some of the most iconic superhero moments in movies, and I got a list of 10 here that I'm going to talk about. And I've got them in order from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I also did my best to make sure that these are not just all moments from the MCU movies. And I actually found that really difficult because, for one, the MCU just has a lot of movies. As compared to the DC universe, they just don't have the catalog of movies. But then I was looking at some older stuff and looking at some other things. So I've got 10 iconic superhero movie moments here that I'm going to talk about. I uh, Some of this does include spoilers from some pretty major moments of major films. So as I go through each movie, I'm going to say what movie I'm talking about. And, it, and it's going to be a little bit tricky if you haven't seen the movie I'm talking about. Unfortunately, you're probably just going to end up being spoiled on it. But if you're a superhero fan at all, odds are you've seen all of these movies. I didn't pick anything that's really obscure or out there. I didn't pick something like Batman 66, even though I love that movie. And the moment of him running around holding the bomb over top of his head definitely needs to be on this list. I didn't pick anything like that. Like, I don't want anyone to feel alienated by this list. It's all pretty standard stuff. If you've seen superhero movies, odds are you've seen all of these moments. So I'll just get started with number 10 here. Number 10 is a moment from Superman Returns, which came out in 2006. Now, Superman Returns is the first of two movies on this list that I actually don't even really like. I don't think Superman Returns is a very good movie, but the airplane rescue sequence is spectacular. And I want to talk about it a little bit. So basically, the the part of this movie is that Superman has been gone. He left Earth, 
people don't know where Superman is. And Clark Kent is returned. So he, he was off. Like he went to Krypton or something like that. But he came back to Earth, and he's just Clark Kent for the moment. He hasn't saved anybody yet. And Lois Lane, she wrote some Pulitzer Prize winning article about how the world doesn't need Superman, and she's all angry that Superman left without telling her, and she has a new boyfriend and all this other stuff, so she's off just kind of living her life, but she is reporting on this new space shuttle. So the space shuttle, it sits on top of an airplane, and the airplane goes off into the sky with a space shuttle on top of it, and then it reaches supersonic speeds, and then the space shuttle detaches from the airplane and is supposed to go up into space. Right? Wrong. Of course it goes wrong because we need Superman to save people from stuff. So what happens here is the unlocking mechanism does not work from the space shuttle. The space shuttle hits supersonic speeds and the airplane with all the people in it, including Lois Lane, is taken with it. And this is when Superman makes his big return debut. I'm actually really surprised with myself of how many details I remember about this movie, because I haven't seen it in probably 10 years. But I, I, I like this part. This part sticks with me. So Superman swoops in, and he uses his laser vision to detach the space shuttle from the airplane, but then the airplane starts to plummet to Earth as he takes the space shuttle safely up to space, so then he has to zoom back down. And what I really like about this part is that one of the wings of the airplanes snaps off, so it starts spinning as it goes down. So Superman has to remove the other wing from the plane, and he has to then go down. The plane is a complete nosedive down towards the ground, and it's going to crash into a baseball diamond because, of course, it is. This is an American film, and their fascination with baseball is astounding. But aside from that, he goes and he catches the plane on the nose and he slows it down in the air. And what I really like about this moment is that as he's slowing the plane down, the plane is like rippling and crumpling under its own weight and momentum. And that's something you don't really see in superhero movies. Like in the original Superman from 1978, he picks up a helicopter just by one of the legs. And I understand that Superman has the strength to do something like that, but the the what the weight of that one leg can handle is not enough. Like, it would just bend under its own weight, and we don't really see that kind of stuff in superhero movies. So the fact that we saw that in Superman Returns when he's slowing down this airplane and it's rippling and crumpling, it makes a lot of sense that it would be doing that. And I like that moment, and he lowers the airplane down, and everyone is safe, and he has his classic Superman line, he breaks off the door, he goes into the airplane, makes sure that everyone is alright, and he says, well, I hope this doesn't put you off of flying. Statistically speaking, it's still the safest way to travel. And then he leaves. And I love that moment, it's a great scene, and that, uh, yeah, it is more of a scene than a moment, and there are some things in this list some of them are literally just one quick moment. Some of them are entire scenes. So that's that's my number 10 from Superman Returns, the airplane rescue. My next one from number 9 is from a movie. You may have heard of it. It's called Iron Man. And Iron Man came out in 2008. And the iconic moment that I picked from this movie is literally the very final thing we see before the credits start to roll is... Tony Stark has just had his battle with Ironmonger, he's won the day, he's a superhero, and S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming in and covering up the story and trying to keep things under wraps. And they give him these cards to read at the press conference, and true to Tony Stark's character, he does what he wants. So he goes up there, and he answers a few questions, and he looks at the cards and he says, the truth is, I am Iron Man. And everyone just freaks out, and it opens the world to superheroes, and it's the start of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's amazing, and it's fantastic. It's a wonderful moment. It's a really great end to the movie. Another aspect to this that I really appreciate is, I think the name of the reporter is Christina Richards, or Christy? Christy something. That, that woman who was at the beginning of the movie, and she was with Tony and asking him questions. Now she's here at the end, and she asked him questions, and Tony Stark says, 
I never said I was a superhero. And she says, I never said you were a superhero. And Tony Stark says, that would be outlandish and fantastic. And then he says, I am Iron Man. And all the reporters in the room stand up and start freaking out except for her. And she's also the only one who's not wearing black. She's the one, she's wearing a little bit of color. And it makes her stand out. And it's a shame that her character didn't really go anywhere. We kind of got her a little bit in Iron Man 2. But just singling her out that way, I really appreciated that. That after all that's happened, like, she's not surprised that he's Iron Man. And yeah, it's, it's just a really fantastic moment it's really well put together it's really well executed by Robert Downey Jr. it's well directed by John Favreau and I think overall it maybe even needs to be higher on this list than uh than number nine but I got a lot of other really good ones on here so maybe like this is just how I'm feeling today and it's like that with top 10 lists how I'm feeling today can not reflect how I'm gonna feel tomorrow or if you ask me ne next week I might completely rearrange these or I might take some completely off the list right so and that's how I'm feeling right now is that the I am Iron Man moment ranks number nine on my list I'll move on to number eight this one is another scene of a movie it came out in 2003 it's from a movie called x2 x-men united now this is the opening scene of the movie where the character of Nightcrawler attacks the White House now Nightcrawler is an X-Men who is blue, he has a tail, he's got all these scars and markings on his face, he's got only three fingers, he's got sharp teeth, and he can teleport. And it's almost this horror-like sequence of him storming the White House and he's disappearing down one hallway, appears in another one, leaps out of thin air, jumps on people, and he's just killing everyone. It is such a well-executed action sequence. It is frightening it's intimidating it is just cementing in the idea of the audience how powerful some of these mutants can really be and it shows the human characters in the movie that maybe the humans really should be scared of them and maybe they should be trying to account for them in somehow or exterminate them or wherever you want that to go but the power behind this character it's really demonstrated in the scene that there's just, like, no one can stop him. Unless there's another mutant involved, he's just gonna blaze right through everybody. He's gonna take them all out. He's he, he's just a killer. And I don't know how else to describe it. He, like, he's just a super killer. And I really, really like that scene. Basically, the purpose of the scene is for that... It's, it's to send a message to the president like he was about to kill the president and then someone got a lucky shot and shot him and then he teleported away and so he ended up not killing the president but then it sparks off the events and the whole plot of the entire movie so it's a really important scene I find it to be really iconic myself it's engaging it's intense and it deserves to be on this list so my number eight is the Nightcrawler Attacks the White House from X2 X-Men United. And I don't have tons else to say about it, so why don't I move on to the next one. Number seven is also from a movie that I don't think is a very good movie, but this moment is really great. And it's the opening scene for The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012. It's directed by Christopher Nolan. And a lot of people really, really like it. I don't think it's very good, but the opening airplane heist is really great. And what I appreciate about Christopher Nolan as a director is that he is really committed to practical effects and doing everything in camera as much as he possibly can. So in this scene where one airplane hooks up to another airplane and is dragging it through the sky, they actually did it. And it looks phenomenal. It looks so real because it is real. It's also a fantastic introduction to the character of Bane and his reveal with the hood being taken off of his head and the just hulking size of him and his methodology and how he thinks and how he talks. Um, for a lot of people, they had difficulty understanding Bane. So if you haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises, you might want to turn the subtitles on. He sometimes is difficult to understand and Christopher Nolan just likes to, to do that. And I've talked about that with Tenet and with Interstellar, 
And it's something that comes up in The Dark Knight Rises as well. But Bane is a character I found very interesting until we get to the very end of the movie and then his character's completely ruined. All of his motivations and methodologies and everything is thrown completely out the window when we get to the, a certain plot point twist. It's just, it's awful and I don't like it. But this opening scene where we have the guy who plays Littlefinger from Game of Thrones He's captured these guys, and the whole point is that Bane is infiltrating these guys. Be I'm so sorry, my wife just phoned me, and I had to take the call, and now I forget what I was talking about. Was I talking about the airplane heist? Yeah, I think I was. Um, yeah, the airplane heist is really good. I can't remember what I was saying about it, but I'm... Sure, I was saying all kinds of good, positive things. So, The Dark Knight Rises, not a very good movie, but that opening airplane heist is is pretty great. So, that one is number seven on my iconic uh, movie list. So, I'm just going to move on to the next one because I don't remember what I was saying about it. Number six is also from 2012. It's a little movie called The Avengers. And... The Avengers was kind of the big culmination of Marvel Phase 1, where we had two Iron Man movies, a Hulk movie, a Thor, and a Captain America, and now they were all coming together. It was unprecedented. It was the first time we had seen anything like this before, and the moment that I picked from the Avengers that is the most iconic is the circular team shot, where you start with the Hulk roaring, and it goes around, and Thor's spinning his hammer and Hawkeye's pulling an arrow and Black Widow's got her guns and it ends with Iron Man landing and Captain America standing all stoic. It's it's so great. You, you've seen this shot time and time again. It's used in Avengers Endgame. It's used anytime the MCU is being advertised in any way. It's It's just that iconic team circular shot. And I don't know what to say about it in depth other than it's a really cool looking shot it shows their unity it shows them finally coming together as a team and it, it's just so good i don't know if you can tell by my enthusiasm so far but i really like superhero movies and i like all of these movies and all of these moments it's just it's such good stuff this especially this circular shot oh yeah it's it's the kind of stuff I live for. And just before this, we have like a long, like a nice long take, an unbroken take of each hero rescuing someone from someone. You have like Iron Man flying around, and then it goes down to Captain America, and then it goes up to Hawkeye, and then it goes over to Black Widow, and then it goes over to the Hulk and Thor, and it's all unbroken. That kind of a shot is called a oneer. I think that's a stupid name. I don't like calling them oneers. Um, but if I say one or you'll know what I'm talking about. I, I prefer to just refer to them as long takes. That's like, I just think it sounds better. I think one or just sounds really, really dumb. So I don't call them winners, but in the Avengers, we have that circular shot and it's just, it's so good. And so, yeah, I'm going to tie in the circular shot and the long take all, all as one kind of really cool iconic moments that we have in the original Avengers movie. And that was number six, and we're getting into the top five here. So top five, we're in number five, and this is the oldest superhero moment, actually. It's from 1978, and it's from Superman the Motion Picture. Now, this is kind of the first one that I'm talking about where it's at the end of the movie. So if you haven't seen Superman from 1978... You've had 40 years to check it out, so I'm not I'm, I'm not holding back here. This is the end of the movie where Superman is saving everyone. Lex Luthor has ignited two bombs in the San Andreas fault and the San Andreas and then so basically, I'm stumbling over my words here, but Lex Luthor's plan is to put a bomb in the San Andreas fault, drop California into the ocean and then everything on the other side of the San Andreas Fault, which is just desert, becomes beachfront property, and he now owns all of the most expensive land. That's his plan. And he does launch these bombs, and California falls into the ocean, and in the aftermath of this, Lois Lane drowns slash suffocates in 
this rock slide that goes into her car and she suffocates on all the dust and like the rocks crushing her. So Lois Lane dies. Superman is real upset about it. He loves her and she's dead and he she's in his arms and he couldn't save her. And he does the one thing that he's not supposed to do. He is not supposed to interfere with human history. So what does he do? He goes back in time to save her. And he goes back in time by way of flying around the world so fast that it reverses the rotation of the Earth. So the Earth starts spinning backwards. And so time starts moving backwards. Now, I don't think that this is how time travel would actually work. I think it would just kill everyone on the planet. But this is how Superman decides to travel back through time. So it works for the movie. But it's still a really good iconic moment. And you see him flying around the Earth. And you can watch the Earth slow down. And it starts to turn the other way. And then you see all the events happening in reverse. And then once he goes back far enough that Lois Lane is alive and okay, he spins the Earth, he sets it right, spinning back in the right direction, and then he's able to go and save Lois Lane in time. And yeah, it's one of those movie moments that is just part of superhero history at this point. And with moments like this and a whole lot of other things in superhero movies, you just gotta put physics aside don't think about how this is supposed to work. Just accept that it works in this world and move on with it and just enjoy the moment. And it's one of those moments that I do really enjoy. It's kind of the climax of the film. And he he breaks a rule because he loves Lois Lane. And there's no convincing him otherwise that that's the right thing to do. And then moving forward in the other Christopher Reeve Superman movies, he does a lot of things because he loves Lois Lane. Like, it drives his character. It's very important to him. So that moment right there from Superman 1978 is my fifth most iconic superhero moment. My next one is really, really good. Well, okay, like, all of these are really, really good. The next one is from X-Men Days of Future Past, and this is the time in a bottle scene. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, it came out in 2014. It's probably like top one or two best x-men movies it's it's really solid but this scene is the best part of the entire movie now they are breaking magneto out of the pentagon he has been imprisoned there for a few years because they think he assassinated jfk i think i don't know american presidents very well so i think jfk's assassination magneto was blamed for and they're gonna spring him out now they get to a part where they're all surrounded and they don't want Magneto to kill anybody, and Charles Xavier doesn't have his powers, and Wolverine is, like, gonna get his claws out and start killing everybody, but they don't want to, like, they try not to kill people. So, Quicksilver uses his power and just decimates everyone. He just incapacitates everybody in a moment, because he can move super, super fast. He puts on his headphones, and his tape recorder must move so quickly in order for him to listen to the song but he is zooms around the room and everything is in super super slow motion so you can watch him do all of this stuff in a moment's notice and you can watch the bullets slowly flying through the air and he pushes bullets through the air and he's running on the wall and he's tasting a sauce that was spilled because he's in a kitchen and he steals a guy's hat and he puts his hat on he takes another guy's fist and like presses it into his own face so the guy is like punching his own face it's a magnificently put together scene it must have been meticulously worked on i've mentioned this scene before in the past and i've said and i'm going to say it again here that they tried to go bigger and better in the next one x-men apocalypse i don't think that that quicksilver scene is better than this one I, I just don't think so. I think they were going too big and too... I th yeah, they went too big is probably the the way I want to say that. So this scene is very small. It takes place in one room. He zooms around. Everybody gets knocked out <laughs> in a moment's notice. He saves everybody and they move on. And then he leaves. He's not even 
like gonna stick around. The, he's super, super powerful, and he just pieces out because his character has very specific character motivations and his motivations don't line up with what they're doing so he's just going off to do his own thing but it is a fantastic scene and definitely one of the most iconic superhero movie moments we're going to move on to the next one we're on the top three here now the next one is from avengers endgame this one also is pretty spoilery for the end of the movie however avengers endgame was the highest grossing movie of all time for a little while it recently lost out to avatar again but it's a pretty big movie if you haven't seen it you probably at least heard of what i'm about to say and i'm kind of rolling two moments into one moment and the first one that i want to talk about is when captain america lifts thor's hammer this is just such good stuff and my wife is calling me again I can hear my phone buzzing. It's all the way upstairs. Should I go get it? That's the question. I better go get it. Hey, sorry about that. I'm back again. My wife is just doing some grocery shopping right now, and she needs to buy me coffee because I'm out of coffee, but the coffee I normally get is not at the store, so she wants to know if I wanted a different kind of coffee. So I mean, we're just having a quick conversation about coffee. But... This moment in Avengers Endgame where Captain America lifts Thor's hammer is so good and it's such a payoff because Avengers Endgame came out in 2019 and this was first teased to us that Captain America can lift the hammer in 2015. So it's a four years in the making moment. In Avengers Age of Ultron, he like nudged the hammer a little bit and then here in Endgame, he is able to fully lift it, fully wield it, use the lightning and everything. And the way the moment was executed, it just felt so good. It was such a everyone in the theater cheering type of moment because, you know, Thanos is beating Thor to a pulp and he's using Stormbreaker to try and kill Thor. And then we get to a shot of Mjolnir and it's like lifting up off the ground and flies through the air and actually when i first saw endgame i thought that thor was using his own power to lift the hammer and summon it i did not expect it to be captain america so then when it flew back through the air and it lands in captain america's hand and everyone is just freaking out at this incredible moment there's a lot of footage online that you can see of theater reactions to this specific moment and it's just people losing their minds being so excited and so happy and people really love Captain America as a character and his journey that he's gone on through these movies and bringing him here to where he can lift Thor's hammer it's magnificent it's so so good it's a well-earned a well-paid-off moment I'm actually going to kind of pair this with another moment here that happened shortly after. Not long after Cap lifts the hammer, do we get the Avengers Assemble moment where everyone is coming through the portals and Doctor Strange is back, Spider-Man is back, Black Panther is back. The reverse snap that Hulk did has now worked and everyone is back and they're all behind Captain America. Falcon said, on your left. And everyone is standing in a line. We get this magnificent shot of all the heroes. And Captain America is just Avengers. And he gets the hammer back in his hand. And he whispers. He, he whispers it. But we can hear it. He just assemble. And Captain America saying Avengers assemble has also been teased for a very long time. Also in Avengers Age of Ultron they were teasing him say Avengers Assemble but it didn't happen and finally in Endgame we get it and everyone is assembled and then there's this huge huge battle and oh man it is really good stuff it's a fantastic moment but I have two more that are even better than this in my estimation so why don't I get to them and then we'll wrap things up here for today so my number two most iconic superhero moment is from a movie in 2008 called The Dark Knight, and this is the moment where the Joker makes the pencil disappear. When I first saw this movie in theaters in 2008, how old would I have been? 
I would have been 15 when this movie came out. And 15-year-old Nathan loved The Dark Knight. Loved, loved, loved it. Like, there was a time where I watched this movie at least once a week for a really long time. I love this movie. It is so good, so engaging, and and Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker is just captivating to watch. And that moment where he puts the pencil in the table, and he says, how about a magic trick? I'm going to make this pencil disappear. And he takes the bodyguard, slams his head on the table, and the pencil goes into his eye, into his brain, killing the bodyguard, and he falls to the ground. And the Joker says, ta-da, it's, ah, it's gone. And then he moves on. The moment is over. He made the pencil disappear, and now he's talking to these mob bosses, trying to get them to give him all his money so that he can kill Batman. And it's nuts. It's really crazy. It gives us just the level... I, 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 what am I even trying to say here? It shows us who the Joker is, how he thinks, how he gets people's attention. He has this terrifying charisma to him. That's that's how I want to describe him. This this unnerving. He's like a car crash that is horrible, but you can't take your eyes away from it. It's just drawing all of your attention. It is fascinating to watch and to see unfold. And then, and this is just the first taste of the character that we get. Like we saw him at the bank heist at the very beginning of the movie, and then this is his real introduction, where we see, like, who he is, and what his plan is, and what he's going to be doing for the rest of the movie, and he starts off by just killing this guy he's never met, never had a problem, like, this guy was just trying to detain him, he, this, this poor bodyguard who's just doing his job, and boom, head slam on the table, and what's actually really interesting about this stunt is it it was done practically so there actually was the pencil and then the camera pans up and the stuntman who's the bodyguard his job was to swipe the pencil away at the last moment before his head comes down and then the camera comes down quickly with it so you don't see the pencil being swiped away and it took a bunch of takes and the poor stuntman, he got black eyes and bruises all over his face. I think this took something like 28 different takes in order to get. And, and what an incredible moment it is. It's just so, so good. And I've only got one more left. Let's talk about it now. It's not the kind of moment that I can get really excited about and just get excited to share with you guys. Like It's just one that is so iconic in its imagery and its beauty and all of that stuff. It's from the first Spider-Man movie in 2002, and it's the Upside Down Kiss. Now, this is, when I was thinking about superhero iconic moments, this is the first one that came to mind that I said, okay, I gotta talk about this, because I think it's the most iconic moment in a superhero movie, where Peter Parker is hanging out with Mary Jane, and they're having a great time, and he's he's trying to give her clues that he's Spider-Man, right? And he's just saying like, "Oh, I was in the na I was just in the neighborhood." And then when Spider-Man then saves her later, like ten minutes later, and it's pouring rain, and she says, "I think I have a superhero stalker." He says, "I was in the neighborhood." The same exact thing that he just said to her, and he saves her from these thug guys who are wanting to kiss her in the rain and they're like maybe gonna kill her or like take her away and assault her or something I don't know exactly what their plan was but they were not nice guys so Spider-Man comes in and he beats them all up and Mary Jane wants to properly thank Spider-Man for saving her and so she peels down his mask so that just his face is shown and they kiss upside down in the rain and the music is there and the thunder and the lightning and it's a beautiful romantic moment between two people who have supposedly never met even though they're Peter Parker and Mary Jean Watson. I think that it's one of those moments that have since been really copied or redone and even within their own movies in the uh, Spider-Man 2, Mary Jane kisses her fiancé upside down, kind of like that, and 
she actually feels kind of dirty about it because like that's their special kiss and then in spider-man 3 he does an upside down kiss with gwen stacy and she's like that's our kiss what are you doing are you kissing people upside down and it's just one of those moments that gets brought up again and again because it's so iconic so that's my number one the upside down kiss from spider-man and that's it for my entire list. That's all 10 of them. Why don't I run through them one more time and then I will wrap things up here for today. So number 10 was the Airplane Rescue from Superman Returns. Number 9 was I Am Iron Man from Iron Man. Number 8 was Nightcrawler versus the White House in X-Men 2, X-Men United. Number 7 was the Airplane Heist in The Dark Knight Rises. Number 6 is the Circular Team Shot from The Avengers. Number five is Superman Turns Back Time from Superman. Number four is Time in a Bottle from X-Men Days of Future Past. Number three is Cap Lifts Mjolnir from Avengers Endgame. Number two is The Disappearing Pencil from The Dark Knight. And number one is The Upside Down Kiss from Spider-Man. That's my whole, complete, most iconic superhero moments list. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. What is your favorite most iconic superhero movie moment. I would love to know. You can feel free to let me know by reaching out to me on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Pottle Nathan, and you can find the show on Instagram at Movies Are Awesome Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to the show. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and a whole bunch of other places. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. It really means a lot to me. Stay tuned for next week where I'll be talking about A Quiet Place Part 2. I'm very excited to return to theaters and check out that movie and then to share my thoughts on it with you guys next week. So thank you and keep an eye out for that. But until then, if you have nothing else to do, go watch more movies.